Hey guys, we're back and we're down here with the pups. I had a May and Emma. I just did a video on this. I want y'all to go look in the channel, subscribe. I put parts to this below the video so you'll find out it's about everything that can go wrong with heaters, especially RV heaters. But this is relative to some residential too. Now, what we have over here is something completely different. I'm going to be showing you what we do. Uh, if you want some gentle, basic warming at a very low cost, you can make yourself your own silicon pad heaters. And by using a heat sink, like I've done here, this one here actually gets to sit inside. And it's been in there. You can see it's pretty old. It's been around for a while. Um, it gets to sit inside my bathroom in my shop. So this keeps my pipes from freezing, my toilet from freezing, things like that. I live in an area where it gets pretty cold. So this here is a 100 watt silicon heater. Below, I'm going to put a link. The best place to get these is going to be AliExpress, AliExpress, and you'll find these for a very good price. If you try to buy them off eBay, they want an arm and a leg for them. Now, this thing here mounted to anything. Now, this is an old uh, inverter case come from a power inverter you can see pretty pretty familiar looking piece of metal um, it'll work just fine I can take it and that's a smooth surface there clean it up nicely with some alcohol and mount one inside of there if I wanted to um, it's not quite wide enough but it'll probably mount on this too and it's not big enough ribs as you see pretty small so it's a design now this here you can get these everywhere and people are like wow that's a cool looking heat sink and yes it is these come from RV refrigerators. So any old dead refrigerator you see at the salvage yard or scrap yard, get you a pull-up screwdriver or a nut driver and take them things out, and they'll, they'll let you have them. The uh, scrap yards do. I've, I've got probably 50 of these things I save. Now, over here, this was part of my old Marshall amp. I had a big, huge Marshall amplifier, and this is what come out of it. Uh, this was on the back of it and had the big transistors all in it and the bridge and it was set up for a lot of power so this was back in the day when i had my my uh instruments and so i don't play no more because of this i've crushed that so but there you go that's a pretty good size heat sink and i saved it and i can probably put about five of those on it 500 watt make standoffs mounted on the wall those won't come off mount it on the wall and have a 500 watt um very dependable heater that puts out about 390 degrees so the way these are designed is they have a thermal switch here uh, three and 390 is nothing compared to um you know any electric heater you find uh it has a little switch that'll turn them on and off when they get to about 380 to 390 that little switch right there will turn them off so um i don't know what the celsius rating is at but that's what it's rated but that little switch inside of them so they all come with that little bimetal disc switch, thermal switch inside. And if I was to mount them on the back of this, I would have plenty of them that I could put on here. And of course, I'd have to work that down or add to it with another piece of aluminum. But it would make a hell of a heater. So why do I? Why am I showing you this? Why is this kind of a unique thing to do? Let's plug one in, and I'll just set it on top of this. And I'll show you how these work. Now, these are originally for, like, engine blocks, uh, big printers, you know, that have to have heat up for their inks. Um, and you can get them for $10, $15. They're really nice. So let's plug that one in. And I'll show you. We're starting out with, uh, let's get a temperature right here, 61 degrees. These heat fast. Look at that. Really fast. And they will get up to almost 400 degrees. So they're made to go on your oil pan. And what keeps them getting 400 degrees is they're going to be dissipating their heat. But if it's just laying here by itself with no way of dissipating its heat, it will build really fast. And the wattage right there, 98.5. It's basically, it's considered a 100 watt. Now this is all, this power comes from my power inverter. So it's probably pulling an actual 100 watts. is 120 volts it's probably accurate so there we go but look at this almost 300 degrees now what's unique about this that little pad right there if you needed to you could put that on the bottom of a pot 
just an aluminum pot and cook, cook with it. It'll actually do that. Instead of having one of those little stoves, you can actually cook with it with just only 100 watts of power. We stuck one of these on the bottom. We stuck an actual little bit larger model. This is a 4x5. I stuck a 4x8, I think it was, on the bottom of a big aluminum pot. And it cooked. We made stew with it. So there you go. And it'll get up to that temperature and it'll shut off. And when it shuts off, I'm going to hold it on there. I'll run this video fast. All right, there it just started its shut off procedure. It's clicking on and off as it's reaching temperature. It clicks on and off, on and off, on and off. All right, so it clicked off and now plugged in zero. So it got up to about 420. So being that this is brand new, they usually get a little hotter until they wear in a little bit but they'll average about 390 to 400 degrees switching off. So that thing turned itself off right there. There's no wattage being pulled and we will unplug it, let it cool itself down. That's 400 degrees, that's gonna be a toasty thing. Now, over here what I've put, if you need something to put in your tiny house, you can actually take some tubes and make some standoffs and just physically mount that on the wall. Just mount it on the wall, just like that. And or use like those screws to stand off, so then send a screw through that hole and then make another one over here and just mount it on the wall. It's totally safe. You don't have to worry about this thing. Now, I'll get over here and we're going to plug this one in. And I'll show you how it radiates that heat. It's a really nice way of doing it. So on this one here, once again, really good average. And it's 97 uh, watts. And I'll show you what it's doing in here. So now this one's an older model that's been around for a minute. It's going to start transferring all that heat. Let me get it over here. There we go. It'll start transferring that heat into that aluminum. So I'll pause and I'll give it a chance to get up its heat because first it's got to distribute it through the silicone and then up in the aluminum. But you'll see back here. getting nice and warm so now these are made for engine blocks and they do stick very well what you'll see in here 95 degrees so like I said it's very warm easy heat no moving parts nothing to worry about the little thermal switches work extremely well they're very effective they're the same thing as I showed you in this previous video about these little click switches They'll disconnect it, and if you feel uncomfortable with the temperature that it reaches, get you one of these and mount it on here, and you can wire through it uh, using the existing wiring. You can wire through it and have it to where it shuts off at a lower temperature, say um, 200, 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and have it shut off with a 100 uh, or 95 degree uh, thermal disk, by thermal disk. So well, there we are again. Let's try that. So you see it's sinking its temperature now. Compared to this one over here, it's sinking its temperature into the heat sink. This whole heat sink, it's getting very warm. All these fins are very warm now. So this keeps my uh, bathroom very nice and warm. This keeps my bathroom from freezing. I'm putting this below the toilet in my bathroom in the shop, in the, my shop out here, in the shop out here. There's Kira. <laughs> And there's the pups again, but this is a easy thing that only uses 100 watts of power. Now, I put this on a Farm Innovations switch, and I'll put a link to that below the video too. So when it reaches 35 degrees in the shop or in that bathroom, it kicks it on. And then this thing here will run as long as it needs to, and it's never failed. This is over two years old, this one here. All right, now real quick, I'm going to throw this in here. Here's the one that uh, was sitting by itself. It is now made to look just like that one. And I just used some of them screws, self-tappers, put them up inside, and it is running right now, heating up. That is the second one getting hotter right now. And over here, let me cure out of the way. 
is the one that we use in the bathroom and now you can just imagine here's the temperature 157 degrees now you see it don't get to 400 degrees it radiates all its heat off of it you see now if you have a camper say an rv camper it's nice and warm if you have an rv camper and you want to put like five or six of these say you want 500 watts these are small this is very small you know the size of that is all right and you can get heat sinks you can order heat sinks uh, when you're on aliexpress just look up heat sinks and make sure that if this says if this over here says 75 millimeter by 120 that you get a heat sink that's 80 by 160. so you make sure that your heat sink is bigger than that all right now you can take something as simple as a baseboard heater control and you can mount this in your rv you want to mount this not on an outside wall but like on a cabinet and then you can wire these in into a strip and literally have this thing here operate these every single one of them say at uh, as temperature as low as this one here will literally go down to 40 degrees see that mark down there that's 40 degrees so you can set it to where your camper or your wherever you want your bedroom uh, three or four of these and it'll just use very little power and actually create a heating system for you so um, I've got a holiday rambler and we're gonna probably do about six of these in it 600 watts randomly all over different places in the rambler and we might even mount fans on them to blow on them and have one of these just one in there like mounted in the cabinet the side wall of a cabinet somewhere wired these all only use 18 gauges just 100 watt and it's siliconized wire see that stuff it's real spongy and very good for high temperature but mounting those they're they won't hurt you if you bump into them they don't make any noise they use very little power and it'll be a warming sensation around the entire rv to put six of these mounted in random places out of the way you could even put stuff up against it it's not going to hurt you and it makes nice warm continuous heat so back to the video and one of the things that my kids use these for they've got these set up on another one that's about half this size is they have it set up for their chicken water so this is the same thing that they use inside of one of those water buckets they charge 50 bucks for that heats up like a little three gallon bucket you could actually just take these and mount an aluminum pan they're waterproof doesn't matter so that was just a interrupt i wanted to put in there to show you before we end the video what it's doing and what you can do